Hello and welcome everyone, I'm Traverian and today I'm going to show you all the tools that I use for sculpting miniatures. I will start with the tools that I use the most and gradually move into some more specialized uh, equipment. So the first tool that I use is a spatula tool. It has this shape when viewed um, from the broadside and from the side view it has a slight bend and um, I have this file here to show you that you do not uh, need any specialized equipment to create your own tools what I used for this it was a, a brass tool a brass rod, sorry uh, and I, I filed that down to a to a flat um, finish and then I um, also created the form so you want it to be uh, more pointy on top at the end and then uh, using pliers I gave it a slight bend as well um, you don't want to use a, a straight tool um, because this is much more versatile and uh, straight tools could could use could uh, leave some finishes that you do not want. Um, <clears throat> what can I do with this kind of tool? Basically, I do everything with it. Uh, first of all, you can uh, press clay on that you just applied. <clears throat> like this and I'll just apply the clay and then press it into shape and um, pull and push uh, the clay around and you can already start uh, smoothing a bit something else you can do is uh, cut with this tool or carve um, structures Um, work in um, details and um, crevices like this for example and then uh, I could uh, for example sh uh, shape the, the biceps and so on so um, and um, for practical reasons I usually have two tools in one and the other tool that I use a lot is uh, this this reek tool and uh, I did this one by cutting off some guitar string and then putting it into uh, this pencil if you do not have a uh, guitar string available you can also create a tool like that um, by using a normal wire and then using a Dremel tool or again uh, a simple file like that um, put it, you put in grooves into the wire uh, parallel grooves like this um, and the more regular you do your grooves the finer uh, the structure you can carve will be and uh, what's the purpose of tools like these um, you can you're g basically it's the main tool for blending together um, volumes you can see here this this is uh, a bit more rough a bit more rough smoothing and uh, here this is a bit more um, smoother and finer uh, grooves and uh, it will leave a, a finer result you can see on this miniature um, I used my guitar string tool for smoothing everything before I will give it a, the final pass with uh, with turpentine. So again, here um, I have a second tool in the back. Uh, ignore this. This is just me being bored while creating my tools. Um, but here in the back, I have um, another form of of loop tool. And uh, 
again I just uh, created this one by uh, using normal uh, aluminum wire <coughs> and uh, using the file and sandpaper I made this really really thin in the front and you can already use really thin uh, wire for this but uh, I actually like the approach of using thicker wire more and then filing it down and sandpapering it because you will have a more sturdy base um, if you leave this area down here a bit um, thicker so what I'm doing with this is uh, I'm create this is what I use for creating negative space um, when I don't want clay to come out um, on the edges you know you could just press in the tool but then the, the clay obviously will go to the sides and uh, stay there and sometimes you don't want that say you want a, a hollow cave um, you want to um, carve out the inside of a skull or something like that um, for creating negative space sometimes also we use mm, these ball tools and uh, they come in various uh, shapes and not shapes but sizes obviously and uh, I just have these two here <coughs> to show you that there's different uh, manufacturers uh, these seem to be the the most widely known ones they're advertised as polymer uh, ball tools or maybe nail art tools sometimes um, I got these of Amazon and uh, you can get these probably by eBay or Amazon as well uh, di probably differs from country to country but uh, you just you just want to have these tools in various sizes yes, you can see this is a larger one then this is a medium one and this is a really small one and there's one that is uh, in between the two uh, again say if you want to create a skull for example you can you could do the eyes like this the eye sockets <coughs> and also for uh, nostrils for example I will use a very um, small one and uh, work on, on the nostrils for example uh, also something that works really well is uh, detailing the lips with the ball tools um, and so on yeah also uh, folds can be worked with these as well but uh, that's not not all you can come up with different uses as well they're really practical so um, this is what I use for for all the scales um, whether, it, whether it is uh, 1 to 10 1 to, 1 to 8 1 to 6 or even smaller miniatures like uh, 72 or 54 and even for the really small ones um, you'll probably use not use the a rig tool like that for really really uh, small scales for smoothing <coughs> although um, when I do the, the, the larger volumes I will occasionally use this one for the rough smoothing um, but as we move into the smaller scales um, the color shapers uh, also they're sometimes they're called clay shapers um, and sometimes silicone brushes um, they come in handy um, especially for smoothing but uh, I do not use uh, these exclusively for smoothing um, there's various shapes but I actually use this one the most it's the angled chisel and also when getting those um, I recommend that you get the Royal Sovereign LTT UK color shapers because uh, there's a couple of no-name brands around that I tried and they simply aren't the same quality um, especially for, for this one 
angled chisel variation. Um, I really want uh, this to be a, a fine tip. Uh, if you have any damage up here, try to get another one. So you, you really wanted this uh, end here to, to be really pointy. So what am I doing with this color shaper? Uh, you, you see um, I can smooth large areas with the back side. Um, I can press in folds like this with uh, with the edges on the side and something else I can do I can use the tip for creating detail and uh, for example the nose the mouth and, and the eye here uh, this one is not done yet um, for all these features I will just use the tip and uh, a really um, good um, property of the color shapers is that they they're sturdy but they they move they're not um, as stiff as for example my favorite tool so while you know I can cut um, with this tool and do really sharp features what I can do with this is do more delicate features and uh, I can vary the pressure I use and uh, it will give me different results so this is uh, really my second favorite tool uh, as I move to the smaller scales um, again something I do like I said is um, always have two tools in one so on this side I have the color shaper and here I, cut, I just cut down um, the wood to this shape and I, I um, sandpaper the way the black as well because it was uh, rubbing off onto the onto the clay that's the sole reason <coughs> so um, again here I have this round shape and I can do uh, all kinds of rough work and I can also uh, roll out the clay uh, which is kind of important for for the first layers of super sculpey that you apply to say a, a an armature uh, you will want to make sure that uh, the clay sticks evenly to uh, to the material that you have below um one more color shape that i want to mention is this one it's a cup round variation and it, you can see it mimics um, this shape well actually this one mimics this shape but uh, technicalities you know uh, again same reason uh, this is uh, more or not as sturdy as the, the wooden one and I can create all kind of shapes um, you know I can work on hair for example if I want really curvy curvy hair I can detail uh, the hair with that, or I could I can uh, make shapes um, that are somewhat round with it, and so on. But uh, here we're already very situational. So that's the the color shapers. Um, one more thing that I want to mention right now for smoothing, I just use um, a very old. Um, brush that I had for painting this is a Raphael 8404 that I probably bought like 10 years ago and uh, the tip got lost eventually and uh, but he's it, it's a really it's still a really good brush uh, the bristles aren't um, spreading in front uh, and it's it's soft and I use this for for the final for the final uh, smoothing and uh, for the final smoothing you also need a medium uh, in this case I use uh, turpentine substitution and I use the odorless uh, variation um, 
you know you could just use regular turpentine if you can deal with the smell um, other names for, for this uh, I think it's also called white spirit um, but yeah what, what this does is it will get rid of all the grain that you have in the sculpt when you uh, use the reek tools to, to smooth it um, and um, you'll get the the final smoothness of the miniature with that. Something else in the brush department that I have is a more sturdier um, brush like that and sometimes I will just use it to uh, create some texture like this can see uh, also when the material is too shiny I can take away some of the shine as you can see here and then uh, I can create some more texture or texture like this um, and sometimes I use it for applying hair mm, but I will show you that in another tutorial Something I will use um, when doing really large sculpts is a wooden tool like that. Mm, though this one is probably um, too big, something like this would be would be better. Uh, but I haven't come around. Uh, I haven't found one of these yet, so I, I just use the uh, this one when the need arises. Um, but yeah, basically this is just for for applying clay and uh, again doing rough shapes and so on this is not necessary but uh, sometimes it's it's helpful um, as I'm again as I move to the smaller scales like uh, 32 millimeters or 28 um, I will want to use a needle for some details um, comes in really handy um, especially if you would uh, damage features with really uh, large tools and uh, especially for eyes um, and the very detailed um, features in the face uh, like wrinkles and all of that I will use a needle tool um, it's not always um, the best to use a straight needle again I also have a needle that is uh, maybe a bit thick but uh, you can you can uh, again create your own needles uh, by just sandpapering them really thin um, but for, for this uh, I just applied a small curvature in the front uh, because sometimes what you will get when you use this tool is artifacts um, that you can try to avoid by using this tool So up here you can see on the upper edge uh, I have these artifacts and the other features are more smooth. Um, again I have another tool here and this is just some really 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 thin wire and uh, there's two of them and uh, as I do wrinkles, you know, I start uh, with uh, with bigger features, and uh, then what you do is you smooth this out with turpentine, and then you give it another pass with uh, this tool, and it will add uh, smaller wrinkles, and it will have a an element of um, of randomness as well because they kind of move in all directions um, also this is uh, very helpful for detailing um, skin of, of large monsters and then you will just give it another pass with turpentine and uh, you will you will have more realistic uh, wrinkles for example so um, I was touching on the ball tools and sometimes 
uh, there's situations where you you can't uh, really reach a part of the miniature and then uh, something like this comes in handy so you don't destroy one feature that is uh, more is on front and so on so this this tool uh, was really expensive I think it was 18 euros or something um, but and again it's not needed it's just uh, for convenience purposes sometimes when I want to create a negative space somewhere um, because this is like a, a ball tip on the end at the end uh, so yeah that's most of my tools um, something just a little something that I want to add uh, sometimes you know you will just want to cut away um, things and therefore a blade comes in handy if you apply it to too much um, volume in some space and also a tool like this um, with the measurement can come in handy sometimes and uh, that's pretty much it I use these tools for everything that I do and again um, I'm getting creative uh, with the use so I for example this one I do not only use for carving sometimes I will just uh, use it for detailing you know hair that I just um, did because uh, of the of the shape which is as you can see around um, and so on just uh, just get creative and if you if you feel like um, you know the tool any tool is too big, just create the same one in a smaller size and um, don't uh, don't be afraid of, of creating your own tools for uh, the needs you have. Uh, if you have any questions feel free to put a comment in the uh, below the video and uh, I will answer as fast as I can. Um, don't forget that I'm also live four times a week on twitch.tv slash Trovarian. Uh, for now, thanks for watching and see you in the next video or on Twitch.